I now have to figure out where to put all of this. Greetings, I'm Rose. Welcome back to my sewing cave. It's been a while. I took a good, well-deserved two months off. I received my Peloton and got a little distracted, but I'm loving every bit of it. I have been doing so well on my Peloton, I decided to treat myself to some fabrics and pattern. And when I say treat, like I went whole hog. Part of this is things that I bought myself for Mother's Day, other things I just bought because I couldn't help myself. So join me now while we go through the wonderful treasures I bought for spring 2021. So first up, if you follow any of the other sewists on YouTube, you're probably familiar with Angel Clayton. And she's recently opened a side Etsy shop called Counted and Curated, and she sells vintage sewing patterns. She has a separate YouTube channel where she opens all of her shipments when they arrive, and then she tells you whether they've been listed or not. Well, I saw this pattern, and if you've seen my recent Edwardian blouse, you know that I'm obsessed with lace and lace inserts, and this pattern gives me another opportunity to use lace and lace inserts. So this is probably from the mid to late 40s, based on the fabric width listed in the instructions. I think the max fabric width was listed as 42. Uh, this is a 36 inch bust, so I will have to do probably a five to six inch grading across along with a three to three and a half inch uh, full bust adjustment. My, my measurements are fluctuating a little bit because I have been using my Peloton, but I cannot wait to try this pattern out. The new website for Vogue Butterick McCall's, I think, and there might even be one more on there, is now called Something Delightful, and they had a recent sell on their Vogue patterns. And I bought these two blouses. This is pattern Vogue 8772, and this is 9029. I've had a really hard time finding blouses that fit because I do have a double G, I think. It's quite a big difference. And um, Cashmere does have a button up, but it's got double princess seams, and I'm not too excited about that look. So I wanna try these first, and if I can't get a good fit, then I will move to the Cashmere blouse that I already have. Next up, I went to Joann's, and of course, they had patterns on sale. Uh, and you haven't seen this, but I do love making costumes. COVID has obviously put a damper on events and Halloween, but this year my family is almost completely vaccinated and we cannot wait to actually go out and go to the Renaissance fairs, the Comic Cons and celebrate Halloween. Bought some costumes just in case because I never know what I'm gonna need to make. This is Butterick 4669. I bought this corset pattern for the Renaissance fair and I'm hoping that my daughter will wanna dress up this year. You never know, she's a fickle teenager. Butterick 3906, it's a with an overskirt and I actually liked the corset pattern that came with this. I saw this and I was just like, I've gotta have it. It's got lace insert, a very similar collar to the blouse I've made and it also comes with the hat pattern. So I'm excited. So this is Butterick 6610. I had made a 1970s pattern earlier, I think fall of last year from a pattern in, from 1971 and it has a very similar sweetheart neckline as this, but this came with some more sleeve options. So I, I really love that dress I made uh, last fall. So I thought I would just get this Butterick 6586 just to make a similar look um, with a little bit of a different skirt. It's got some pleating um, and a little bit more fullness. Last pattern, Butterick 6640. This is just a basic shirt dress. While I was at Joann's, I decided to look through the fabric and Jennifer with A Vintage Vanity and Stephanie Canada recently did a collaboration where they sent each other fabric and notions and patterns to sew something up and they had no idea what they were getting. Jennifer sent this fabric to Stephanie. I absolutely love it. It's a quilting cotton. I sew garments out of quilting cotton. Don't at me. I love it. It's beautiful. And I thought it would just make a beautiful fit and flare, maybe a shirt dress, or even like this would make an amazing quilt back. You know, actually use it for what it's designed for. But I just thought it was so beautiful with all the different colors. I have tons of cardigans in different colors, so I could actually just swap them out and have tons of outfits with just one base dress. And I bought six yards, and that was all that my Joann's had left. So good luck finding some, because this is a fabulous fabric. I haven't made t-shirts in a while. I know 
I think it was about four months ago, I did a series where I was making the perfect layering tee to wear underneath sun sundresses for the winter, but I haven't made any just like t-shirts for kicking around in the spring and summer. And Joann's had just this basic kind of, um, it's, it's a poly, it's a poly blend, so it's not gonna be too breathable. I'll make sure to make it short sleeve. And the dots are kind of taupey and not white, but I thought this would just make a basic tee, maybe the gable boat neck, or just maybe like just an oversized drapey tee, or I'd probably make another wanted tee. I love that pattern. The next store I bought fabric from, Fabric Mart Fabrics. They were my last haul. I love it. The website always has such great deals. Anything on there just goes really, really fast. And they had a 60% off site-wide sale a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I know, I'm just such, I'm such a sucker for sales. Uh, and I went on there just to see what they had, and they had lots of goodness. Um, so one of the things they do send, if you are, um, I think it's called a premium membership, they will send you emails on fabric before they're available to the general public. And they had sent an email with a great deal on rayon crepe. And I have been loving natural fibers lately just because I've been working out so much. I get kind of hot and sweaty. So uh, natural fibers have been very, very helpful. So I am trying to get more natural fibers into the stash if I can actually fit this stuff in the stash uh, instead of, you know, like the, the nylons and the polyesters and those things are a little less breathable. So one of those rayon crepes they had was this beautiful olive rayon crepe. It's got a beautiful drape and it isn't too sheer. So I think I can use this for a lot of things like a jumpsuit, a dress, even a blouse. I probably wouldn't want to use this on like a dress that wasn't gathered. Like it needs a little bit of bunching just because it is so lightweight. And then I bought, how many yards of these did I buy? I bought, like, <laughs> I bought five yards of each of these rayon crepes. Don't at me. Okay. Um, this is just baby blue. Um, it's not really my color, but um, it was a good deal. How much was this per yard? $2.99 per yard, heck yeah, I'm gonna buy it. I can use this for underlining. I can use this as like a blouse, anything else. It's a good, just basic color, just like the olive. <laughs> And I don't know if I've talked about my love for burnt orange here, but I love burnt orange. I don't care if it's spring. I will wear burnt orange year round. So I bought five yards. Oh, I forgot. This is 54 inches wide. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I got five yards. Yeah, this is gonna last forever, um, but it's just so beautiful. Oh, love it. Uh, and then while I was there, it's like, okay, well I'm shopping. I might as well look and see what else they have on the website, right? Um, and I, next to burnt orange, Teal is my favorite color. And they had this polyester crepe, and it's a suiting weight. And I was thinking it was gonna be a little bit lighter, but you know, this is this is a good suiting weight. And I had recently made a um, houndstooth pencil skirt, and I thought that this would make maybe a nice um, structured like tank or maybe a blouse similar to the one I'm making, I'm wearing here. I had talked about the bundles that Fabric Mart does, right? So it's like 15, 20, $25 for 10 yards of fabric. Like it's ridiculous cheap, but you can't pick. You don't know what you're gonna get. You just pay the 25 bucks and 10 yards of fabric show up. So here's what I got. I received a yard and three fourths of just this cotton knit. So this would be great for some t-shirts. It is a little bit lightweight. So I wouldn't want it to be too clingy because I'd be afraid that it might show um, you know, like lingerie lines, but it'd be a good just like kick around the house. Or if it's a flowier top, I could wear this to my Zoom calls. Cause yes, we are still working from home. This feels like it's a polyester. It, it actually is textured like a crepe, but it is super sheer. And it's a polyester in teal color. And it's marked here, how many yards did they give me? Two and a half. So this could be good for a, a top. Um, if I underlined or lined um, maybe a gathered flowy dress, I could use this, uh, but it's a good basic solid color that'll be good for my stash. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get, so you're guaranteed not to love everything that comes in your bundle. I have no idea what to do with it. 
Uh, it is like a big Hawaiian print. It's an ITY, but you see this white detailing here? It's actually kind of like a puff paint. So um, it's very early 1990s. Um, if it wasn't 100% polyester, it would make a great like beach cover-up caftan. Um, so maybe this is something that you wear when you're in air conditioning while you're on vacation. This is, it feels like a nylon trico, almost like something that you would make lingerie out of. And it is kind of like a pinkish purple with a cream kind of lace floral print. And I, at first glance, I was thinking this thing is hideous, but it would make a great slip. Um, and like maybe some underwear, which I've never made before, but it, it is super slinky and I think it would make great just layer to stop, um, you know, like seams and like panty lines from showing up. So I'm, I know I will use this. I do have a uh, kind of a big box of lingerie stuff that I inherited from my grandmother and this is just going to go in there. So my local fabric store is Wildwood Creative out of Renton, Washington. I do support that business on Patreon. I do get a discount. I do get, I'm at the $50 tier, so I do get some free fabric every month. I get access to the Discord. Um, I love that business and I love supporting them. I'll put their information in the description box as well. The first thing I bought was this white double gauze. I got six yards and it is a little bit narrower and everyone I've seen online, they always talk about how the double gauze kind of like shrinks up so I bought more than I would need. This is going to be like a chemise or a pirate blouse or something kind of gathered blouse for my husband or my daughter or me to wear to the Renaissance Fair this year. It just feels like it's going to be so light and flowy and it does get hot at the Renaissance Fair because you are outdoors. Sometimes it gets up to like 90 to 100 degrees even in Washington. So this would be just a nice layer to protect the skin without getting too hot. So I took my daughter with me and it's hit or miss. Like sometimes she sees stuff that she likes and she's like, oh yeah, mom, make me something. Other times it's like, please mom, no, I don't need that. Well, <laughs> she saw this fabric and loved it. And when Tawny showed it on her Instagram, I loved it as well. But I was like, what am I ever gonna use this for, right? And who's the designer? Holly Zollinger for what is this? Uh, Narada Hansen fabric. So I will put links to any of the fabric that's available in the description box. And I think we bought two and a half yards. So it was a little bit expensive, um, you know, outside more than like what I would normally pay for yardage. But my daughter said she wants a, um, like a button up shirt out of this. And so I think I'm going to make her the Love Notions Melody tee. Or it's a Melody blouse, Melly blouse. And it'll button in the front and then she can also uh, knot it you know if she likes she can tie it in the front and it looks super cute and I think it'll be great for this summer because she can just like pop it open and wear it with a tank and I bought more yardage than we need I know powder matching is gonna be a little bit difficult but that's why the cut on sleeves on the dolman blouse are amazing and I'm hoping that there's gonna be enough left on this to make some kind of like flowy tank like an Ogden Wildwood had this canvas and I thought, you know what? It would be really cute like for shorts or maybe short, um, shorts overalls, you know, just something for the summer or a pinafore. We'll see, but I bought enough of it. I think there was two yards here. So it'll be enough to kind of play around with, but definitely not enough for like full length overalls. But um, yeah, and I'm thinking about using the Jenny overalls from Closet Core Patterns for that. And then as part of my Patreon that I um, subscribe to for Wildwood every month, she sends me like two yards of fabric. And you do kind of, it's like mystery, but you kind of tell her what you're thinking about. And so I had sent her a message on the Discord group and just let her know, I was like, okay, well, I'm thinking something like 1990s retro for my daughter, right? I'm like quasi rocker. And she sent this and I, at first I was like, eh, but then, I looked up checkerboard and I don't know what happened to my memory of the early 1990s, but checkerboard was everywhere. So I'm going to make my daughter another Love Notions Melody tee or Melody blouse out of this fabric and maybe put a contrasting upper collar. 
Uh, and she's actually really excited about this one. So, um, oh, so she has now some um, grab bag buttons. Like there's just this container of buttons that you can grab through and I think they're like 50 cents a piece. So I bought these really cute buttons. I have way more buttons than I need, but you can never have too many buttons. Except for, you know, when you need six and you only have five and then you have to buy more buttons. But, you know, let's not think about that. So Tawny just got this in earlier this week and some of them have already sold out and they're beautiful. I love this. Look at this beautiful, like I said, teal. It's this teal blue. This is the tinsel twill. It's got such a lovely drape to it. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. Um, but you can never have too many solids. And... Um, it's pretty, so I bought it. This is not tinsel twill, this is tinsel linen, so that's why it's got a little bit of a heftier drape. Um, so I'm thinking to make paper, well, I don't know if I would wear a paper bag, pants, um, maybe a jumpsuit, I don't know. It's pretty, so I bought it. Oh. <sighs> okay, I think there's like 25 pounds of fabric here. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, so I know Kashi, Kashi's the owner of Metro Textiles, and if you hit a certain, like, monetary threshold, he throws in some free yardage, and I, th this is my free yardage, and it is like, um, it's lace, so you can see through it, I don't know, can you see through this? Yeah, you can see through that. So it is lace, but it is animal print. And then this black is actually flocked and it's glitter throughout. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna use this for. It's not quite my cup of tea. It may go to the next in-person swap that my sewing group does. We shall see, but it's fun. And I'll now have glitter all over my table. Thanks, Kashi. I bought a lot of basics. Uh, as you've seen, I bought a lot of solids. I tend to buy too many prints and then I don't know what to make with them. So I am trying to buy more, more solids lately. And then this, I thought this is just a beautiful springtime fabric. This is a Kelly Green cotton sateen. I bought four yards of this and I thought that this could be, you know, a coordinating like bolero to something with the green bean accents, but it's just a good, vibrant solid. And then next up is, this is a black cotton wall, and somebody correct me, like half the people say it's wall, half the people say it's voile. I've been using either one, so feel free to correct me or let me know what you think is right in the comments. But I bought, um, I think 10 yards of this, I have been using a lot of um, foil in my Gunny Sacks kind of inspired dresses. And so this is just a good underlining as well if I wanted to use it to put underneath something like that animal print lace so it would be a little bit more opaque. I bought some white linen. It is just a little bit sheer, but again, this is just, I thought we could add it to the stash for possible Renaissance Fair costume. It was on sale and I know I will use white linen in the future. And this, I only got a yard of it and it is this beautiful lace. And if you have seen, um, was it? yeah, this month, it's still May. <laughs> if you have seen um, May's pattern for Gertie's um, charm patterns, there is this top, I think it's the gardener top, and it's got an insert at the top, and she's been using lace or contrast, and I thought this would be a beautiful lace for that. I might have to um, kind of reinforce it by uh, maybe some organdy or a chiffon so it's still see-through, because this does shift a little bit, and that part of the blouse needs to be reinforced just a tiny bit. This is a cotton cotton sateen uh, it's cream and I thought this would just make a nice blouse 10 yards of cream voile I'm hoping this pile doesn't fall over and then um, as part of 
like that gardener shirt I was talking about, the gardener blouse that um, Gertie just released. I thought this, you can't really see it, but it is a mesh with kind of like squiggly sequins. Do you see that? And I thought that would be great as that um, kind of triangle portion of the gardener. And then I want to make a dress using the gardener as a top and then have a gathered skirt on the bottom. And so I thought I could use this as the skirt and then have the mesh insert and it'll be very 50s and very beautiful. I don't know where I would wear a sequin gathered fit and flare, but I'm gonna make one and it's going in the stash. Uh, next up, uh, so we had talked about t-shirts and I saw this, it is a, a rayon. It is a tiny bit see-through, but I think it'll be fine and I'll probably make a Nico. And my daughter has been wearing her Nikos like crazy, the tank version, but they're a little bit too short on her. So um, I don't know, I may make her one out of here if she if she likes this fabric. I bought extra, just why not? Don't fall over. And this I thought was beautiful. This is a Rayon Shally. Let me, oh, this is the outside. Let me get this open. Isn't this beautiful? I saw this and immediately thought, okay, 1970s, I'm gonna make another like prairie dress. I just thought it was so pretty. And I love all of the kind of the, the mustard yellows in here and the forest greens. And I could do a lot of, um, you know, uh, like design elements with these stripes. And then Lena Hoshek is one of my favorite designers. And she recently made a fit and flare dress where she used the stripe fabric, uh, you know, facing different directions as a design element. And I was thinking that I could make maybe a dress using this. And I got four yards of this. Because of the prairie dress and all the gathering, you need a lot of fabric. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like trying to make sure it doesn't fall over. Um, what's next? Oh, okay, so I got this. Um, and I saw this and I thought it'd be really cute for like a play suit as maybe a blouse with a, a white collar, uh, maybe halter top or, you know, just um, a shirt dress or anything. But it is just this beautiful red and it's not really coming through. These are white polka dots. Um, it's not completely opaque, but I could get away with not lining this. And I just thought it was fun. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, this is Minnie Mouse. I wish that hadn't popped into my head, but I'm still gonna make something out of it. And then the last fabric, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a lot. I'm, this is gonna be a long haul. So you're just gonna have to stick with me. This is Seersucker. So it is a, um, a white with kind of a blue chambray Seersucker. I haven't worked with Seersucker in a while and I just thought, you know, that'd be something fun. Um, I always see this and I think of like, you know, Seersucker suits and I, I don't know, for some reason I want to make myself a Seersucker suit, maybe a play suit for summer. I don't know where I would wear it, but I want to make it. And I got five yards of this, so that should be plenty to do anything coordinating wise with um, the Seersucker. Okay, <laughs> thanks for sticking with me. I know that was a lot. I now have to figure out where to put all of this, um, but I will fold it nicely and put it away. Um, maybe go through and call some of the you know older fabrics that I know I'm not gonna use. Uh, I do need to be better about that. And I will be posting my sewing cave walkthrough so you can see the stash shortly. I filmed it before this last haul so um, it will probably look nicer in the video than it will by the time I'm done shoving all of this in my Calyx unit. But thank you for tuning in today. Like and subscribe, you know the spiel. I will be putting out more videos. I know I took a decent break, but thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day. Bye.